Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. If this is your first time joining us, thank you for being here. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the major platforms, and our website, fortworthroots.com. You can stream it straight off of there. Or you can find us at YouTube. Just look for Fort Worth Roots. We're on there as well. This is a variety interview podcast. We interview people from all walks of life. Last week, we had a Fort Worth-based artist from the rap genre that joined us for episode 44. And uh, this week, we have the longest-serving mayor of Fort Worth, Texas. She did 10 years as our mayor. Now, at the very beginning of the show, before I launched it, I had to come up with a name and and kind of a direction for where I was going to take the show. And the number one guest, the first person I wanted to interview was uh, the mayor of Fort Worth. Now, this is in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, so she kind of had her hands full. But we finally got her on the show. She's no longer the mayor, but... That's not what was important to me. This is somebody that was integral to the growth of the community for a very long time. And uh, I love this city. So I just had to, this is an interview that I just had to have. And I finally got my way. We did this interview uh, down in the stockyards at downtown Cowtown Theater. And uh, it's a beautiful venue. They've refurbished this thing from a state that you just wouldn't believe. If you go there, they have pictures on the wall. You can see the whole remodel and, and the state of the place. Uh, before anybody got in there and started to fix it up. Uh, really cool place. I am beyond grateful to to get the opportunity to interview our guest today. And I hope that I get the chance uh, to, to interview her after she has won her seat uh, as, as the county judge. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. And please give it up for our guest today, Betsy Price. Let's start the show. <laughs> just came from the uh, Texas Motor Speedway? I did. How did that go? It was good. What were y'all doing out there? We were just filming a Facebook Live with Rob Bramich, their CEO, talking about... That's right. Your your show, right? You -hmm. you do those... Live with Betsy. We do them on Thursdays. Every week, right? Mm -hmm. And we tape them ahead, but they play like they're live. We started it at City Hall about three years ago and then intensified it during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then when I left office, I dropped it for a while. Then I thought, no, I'm going back and do these. And right now we're kind of doing a series of small business owners and entrepreneurs and then a couple of big ones like TMS. Okay, so you do kind of themes, and you'll stick with a series for a while. Yeah, yeah, but it, but we don't, not necessarily. I mean, if something mm-hmm. fun comes along, we'll do some, something fun. But we try to kind of get a grouping of them for a bit. And yeah, then go from there. It's yeah. just fun. I'll have to check out I, more of those. I I did see it when I was researching a little bit about you, and I I know that I'd seen it in the past, but yeah. I I haven't spent any time actually looking at them. That's okay. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're boring. <laughs> Can't all be uh, smash hits. That's but right. I, I know that you spent a lot of time informing the public right whenever the uh, coronavirus thing was getting uh, real heated. You mm-hmm. were doing daily updates uh, through Facebook. I, I guess that's where that... Yeah, we did. I mean, we were... I thought it was so critical that the public have... As you know, in hindsight, we're all looking back and the information we were getting from the feds, from the state, and all had left a lot to be desired. Nobody knew anything, but it just didn't build a lot of trust. And Mm -hmm. I felt it was important because I've always traditionally had the trust of the public that I go out every day and talk to them. So every day about 6 o'clock, we would get on and and do 5 or 10 minutes and talk a little bit about what we'd learned that day and what people should know. And even to the point of saying, I don't know, you know. But mm-hmm. if you'll bear with us and work through this, we'll try to get you some answers. Yeah. And that was the most honest thing that anybody could say yeah. at that point, or uh, even now, uh, <laughs> yeah. sometimes. I mean, I'm a big one on being real brutally honest about yeah. things. Yeah. Well, um, and, and that comes through. The uh, the sincerity and the, the the way that you conduct yourself does uh, promote trust. I mean, it, Thank you. the series of videos you were doing for the public for coronavirus just seemed so on par that it, it, it wasn't a surprise at all. It's, well, of course she's doing daily uh, updates to, to let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, we had good guests, and we just had the chance to talk to people. And mm-hmm. they got to where, I mean, I had people say, we don't watch the 6 o'clock news, we watch yours because we get a better update on That's COVID. Right. Yeah, 
Yeah, no fluff. Just no fluff. Just just facts. the facts, ma'am. As they used to say, it's Texas. We got to be straight shooters. When I was putting this podcast together, I uh, I had put together kind of a, an informal list for myself. Sure. Uh, this was just something I wanted to do, and so okay, well, if I'm going to do this, who do I want to interview? And Betsy Price, Mayor Betsy Price, was the the first one on my list. Well, aren't so, you sweet? So this is this is a I big. Appreciate that. We were talking about this the other day, but this has kind of brought everything full circle because. Um, I don't know why, but just having uh, see, seen you in the public so much, and then you and I actually met at a, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, it was HGTV's Flipper Flop Fort Worth, and you oh, were yeah. the premiere, yeah. that's the what premiere it was called. The premiere that night. Uh-huh. And you were there for that, and we were so excited, because it's the first time I'd ever been on TV, and that uh, was fun. Morgan and I did six episodes with them, yeah. and and so uh, I got to kind of interact with you a little bit there, of course, I was telling uh, my friend Lucas, that I, I try to stay in the, the wings. I don't want to be in the way or underfoot. So I kind of stayed out of that. And then well, one year at the, the stock show and rodeo, we're going through the where they've got all the little booths set through up. Through the on exhibits the, hall. Yeah. yeah. And we're cutting through there. And uh, I think uh, Joy Lee was probably on my left. And, and and we're going through there. And she just says, oh, hey, Betsy. And, and you went, hey, Joy Lee. And, and uh, y'all talked for about 30 seconds. And then we just continued on. And I said, well, who's that? Is that somebody you work with? She, oh, it's the mayor. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> just, just such a casual interaction. I'm just and, me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm not married to any title. It's not a big deal. I'm right. just about the service. But I think that's that's why I had to have you on the show. So thank you so much for doing this with me. You're more than welcome. Now, usually, um, and Morgan was really concerned that I would just sit here and chase rabbit trails, which is what I'm really good it's at. Okay, I'm pretty but, good at that too. <laughs> But I did put together some uh, some questions here and uh, thought we could give these a go. And if I if it's a question you don't want to answer, just say pass. We'll move on. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you in your time as mayor, what are the two accomplishments that you're most proud of? You know, somebody asked me that a while back. It's really hard. I mean, I served 10 years, the longest serving mayor for Orse ever had, and probably had more public engagement than nearly anybody because that was my thing. It still is my thing. It's hard to narrow it down after 10 years and watching the growth of the city to a couple of things. Probably um, my young leaders group, Steer Fort Worth, is a big, was a big deal. When I was first elected in 2011, we looked at the voting records, and the voter turnout was abysmal anyway. It just is in municipal elections. Shouldn't be, but it is. Um, but less than 1% of them were under the age of 40. Wow, and that meant all of us that were older and gray-haired or colored or not, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> were making decisions that it impact the young people's life for twenty or thirty years. And yeah. so we started a group called Steer Fort Worth, and they named themselves. And the idea was to get them more interested in civic involvement. Right. And they're now three hundred, four hundred strong. They're a five hundred one c three on their own. I'm very proud of them. There are a couple of them serving on city council now. Several of them serving on boards and commissions, and they have upped their voting um, age of the younger people are voting. This last election with Mayor Maddie saw a lot more young people come out, and I'm very proud of that. And clearly, you know, I'm a bit of a nut about community health, and we worked really hard on community health with Fitworth and our issue for kids and then blue zones we got to be a blue zones designated community and that was a huge effort fort worth was every year gallup poll surveys the top 190 cities in the nation and the questions range from how do you feel about your city how are your finances how's your health how many fruits and vegetables do you eat how much exercise <laughs> do you get how much sleep how's your mental you know all kinds of things and obesity, high blood pressure, all kinds of things. And Fort Worth was number 185 on the least healthy mm. seven years ago, nearly nearly eight years ago now. Is, is that before you started all the It was before bike we started the bl- biking in the Blue Zones. We'd always had a little bit of biking because that's yeah. my gig is yeah. cycling. <laughs> but it was before we started the Blue Zones. And so we really started looking at that, and the businesses were complaining about lost productivity and high insurance cost. And unbeknownst to us, the Chamber of Commerce was also really worrying about it. So the Chamber, THR, and my office came together and said, what national program is out there that we might could do? And we brought the Blue Zones people in. They said, you can't do this. Fort Worth's too big. This is cattle country. This is, you know, the, the health is too bad. And I said, yeah, we will. And what were they trying to restrict? 
they just felt like we, you know, uh, Blue Zones has a plant slant. They want people to eat. And I said, we don't have to go plant. We're, this is Texas cattle country. We're not going to do that. We can add, we can make the healthy choices easier. Mm-hmm. And we can educate people about movement and offer more parks and more trails and put bike lanes on the roads and offer more community events where people can come out and do things. Cooking classes, demonstrations for the kids, literature. And they came back in and said, we think they did a six-week survey of the community and decided the community was committed to improving their health. And this past year, we were number 35 on the best health of the cities. Not bad. It's a huge gap from 185 <laughs> down to 35. Yeah. And, it, you know, why we're not where we ought to be, but no city is. We're a lot yeah. better than we used to be. And people think about Austin being the healthiest city in the nation. Or in the state, for okay. sure. And we're tied with Austin. Really? For a healthy city now. Well, you know, we have some really good food here. We have some great food. So I can see how great it could food. be a challenge. You could bike all you want. But, but you know, <laughs> it's not. People always get confused about that. And they always think, oh, I eat too much. It's that She wants me to be thin. This isn't about being thin. Right. This is just yeah. about being healthy. Yeah. So you can enjoy your life. And about, if you're used to making unhealthy choices six days a week, think about changing that to four days a week. Yeah. Have, you know, two more where you make healthy choices. Yeah. And, or get out and move a little bit with your kids or walk around the block. And, and and it's good for the city. Yeah. If you're out walking around your block or riding your bike, you're going to know your neighbors. Mm-hmm. And neighborhoods where people know each other are definitely safer neighborhoods. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Well, from what I've seen, the parks look incredible. Um, we added a lot of parks in the what last is, 10 years. What is the... Uh, the, the, the one park in Fort Worth that immediately comes to mind is right there in the middle of... Uh, Kind of the Seventh Street and downtown area. Trinity Park. Trinity Park. Mm-hmm. It's got the basketball goal that we mm-hmm. had to take down. And <laughs> it's back. <laughs> Is it back? Uh-huh. Okay. I remember that was a big hot topic. Well, it was I, a hot topic, I, and that was a recommendation <laughs> from the CDC and HHS, the Department of Health and Human Services, and we were all looking at them, going, "Get it? Why? <laughs> you need them outside." And, you know, they were worried about outside spread, and then they quickly yeah. found out that's not how it spreads. And right. We put the nets back up after yeah. a while. What a ridiculous thing. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Next question. In the 10 plus years as mayor, if you could go back and do anything differently, what would that be? Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm not a real big one to think back and think, oh, I wish I could redo that. I'm much more prone to think, what did I learn from that? Mm-hmm. And what we, did we learn? And what might we, lessons might we take forward? I don't have a lot of regrets about things we did. Uh, I've said publicly, I think the biggest mess up we had was the Atatiana Jefferson, which was the very, not the, uh, the Atatiana Jefferson we actually did well, but the Jacqueline Craig issue, which was before it, it wasn't a shooting, it was just the first of the real racial issues. And I don't think that the city was quite as responsive as we should have been. Yeah. I'm not sure my office was. And then the Tatiana Jefferson thing was tragic. There's no way around that. And no one could have handled it probably any better, but no one could handle it particularly well. Yeah. It uh, was a re it's a re it still is a really tough sore for this city. Yeah, it was absolutely terrible. But mm-hmm. I I do remember that uh that incident and then a few other ones where you you put out a, a public statement and uh, I don't remember how I came across it, but I read it. And, uh, you know, no, no amount of words are going to take that back. But the, the way that you addressed it was, was very sincere. And well, it, it was tragic. You did everything you could. I mean, you have to do everything you can, and you have to own it. You can't say if so-and-so or if such-and-such or maybe so-and-so was responsible. You simply can't do that. Right. As a city leader or community leader, you have to own it and go, yeah, you know, we made a tragic mistake. One of our right. officers made a tragic mistake, and more than likely, he'll pay for it the rest of his life. Oh, yeah. And the rest of us learned a lot from it, and the community did too. Yeah. All right. Um, Glenn Whitley, I wanted to ask you about this. He served as Tarrant County Judge since 2007. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, from what I was able to dig up, it seemed like he's he's done a very good job. He's He's got a lot of positive feedback, a lot of good support. People are happy with him, yep. it seems like. What will you do as a county judge to improve the 15th largest county in the United States? You know, Glenn's been a great public servant. He was a commissioner before that. He was a school board member. He's a friend of mine. When I was tax assessor, when I was elected in 2001, he was commissioner and then in 07 ran for county judge. And I worked with him till 2011 
when I was tax assessor. He's done a great job, but I think what's what's here that for improvement. This is a huge county now that's had 15th largest in the nation and had phenomenal growth. I think we have to work on keeping our property taxes low so that the quality of life is still good here. Work on overall quality of life, and that includes public health. I'm not sure our public health department was really at its top game. I think that we've kind of outgrown some of that. I think addressing community health, the pandemic's opened a perfect door for us to take a look at how do we address this? How do we get great service to everyone in the county? How do we respond to 911? How are we going to address pandemics going forward? It's a wonderful opportunity to look at education and really get real serious. There are, I think, forgotten how many school districts in the county 24 or 5 I think I've forgotten there were 14 in the city and there's more in the county well those change all the time yeah right? I mean yeah some uh but you know it's a chance to pull all the other mayors superintendents together and say and business leaders what do we need and what do we see coming in education and how do we help these kids get out of the ditch that are in the ditch after they were not doing great to begin with and then COVID really lowered their yeah. scores and what happens right. and i think transportation the roads need a lot of work i think we may see some dollars from the state to be addressed into public infrastructure and that'd be great because we haven't had much of that for years those are really the key things move this county is technology still needs to move forward make it mm-hmm. a little easier for people to access county services yeah you know we have to work with all the other elected officials at the county yeah. and and figure out and the public and figure out how we want to move it forward yeah now that uh the title county judge um you were just on someone's podcast talking about this but it's it's kind of it, it's not necessarily the way you think of the the judge sitting in the courtroom slamming the gavel it's more of uh, the kind of like the mayor of a county. Is yeah, the way it's you a put bit it. of a mis- misnomer because the county judge heads up the commissioner's court, much mm-hmm. as the mayor heads up heads up the city council. So you can think about it as the county judge being the figurehead for the uh, county, and really kind of like a mayor for the county. And one reason it's county judges in small Texas counties, and indeed here it just isn't done here because we have full complement of courts. The a uh, county judge has the authority to do some judicial work. They can do mm-hmm. mental health commitments. They can do uh, condemnations, all kinds of things. Where in small counties where they don't have a full complement of courts, they still do some of that. But Tarrant County, in the large counties, you don't. Right. It's administrative. Yeah. So that in a, in a smaller county, that person might step into more roles. Mm-hmm. More have judicial. To wear more hats. Wear more yeah. hats. I mean, we wear plenty of hats around here, <laughs> but just not much judi- judicial. Okay, those are all the tough questions I wanted right. to ask you, and that was just to keep me. As from county judge, you can <laughs> you can marry people though. So really, uh, you can perform weddings. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. We'll throw that out there in case anybody was thinking about getting married <laughs> anytime soon. The stock show. I I know we kind of glanced over that a second ago, but what what all do you do at the stock show? Because you're there every year, and and you get up there, and you. Uh, you get to kind of chime in every once in a while and participate. Yeah. And what all do you do at the rodeo? Oh, I love the rodeo. I grew up riding horses, and my cousins all had cattle that they showed. And I grew up just about two blocks from the stock show. Really? And we would be over there all the time, with either with our horses or with our cousins. And I went to South High Mountain Stripling and Heights and used to – Stripling's gymnasium was used for the 4-H and FFA kids who didn't have anywhere to sleep, and mm-hmm. they put them on the beds there, so we were real involved. But as mayor, you know, you have the opportunity to be at the stock show. Early on, you get to work with the stock show committee and kind of see what, what they're doing and programs. You get to go to the horse shows, cattle shows, and greet people. And I got to do the awards at the um, the Wish With Wing one and some of the others, the mm-hmm. handicapped kids ones those are fun yeah and then i get to ride in the parade every right. year and get to ride in the grand entry as often <laughs> as i want to and i would have ridden first year i was in office i rode oh i probably rode 20 20 times or more and after that my staff said you can't do this you got too much else <laughs> and so i would average six or eight times during the rodeo i'd ride grand entry and yeah. one of the funniest things was one year i had a torn calf muscle and I had a boot um, a walking cast right. boot and my orthopedist said 
no, you can't have any weight on that. I said, this is the middle of the stock show. I have to ride grand entry. And he said, you won't be able to. You won't be able to get this big orthopedic boot and your saddle stirrup. And I said, oh, but I will. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I would get on my horse and take the boot off and hand it to someone and put on my cowboy boot and ride grand entry and come back. And at the back, before I could get down, they would I would take off my cowboy boot, put on my orthopedic boot, and get off my horse. So No injury? No injury. No further injury? No in- further injury. <laughs> but, it, you know, just it's something I enjoy doing. Some of the mayors have ridden. Some of them don't ride. Uh, but I just always enjoyed that. And I always enjoyed being able. Um, I was one of the founding members of a group called Women Steering Business. And it's professional women and women that own their own businesses that buy the steers mm-hmm. just as the syndicate does for all of them. But we buy the girls' steers. We try to make certain these young women know there's a future and there are successful women supporting them. That's awesome. So we get to go to the sale and bid on those, and that's always fun. It's just fun to be down there. Yeah, I love it's it. It's so Fort Worth. It's it's my favorite thing about Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot, but that, that right there is kind and of... It, what yeah, ties it all together for it's me. It's not just Fort Worth. Our whole region oh, yeah. is really, the for county sure. as a whole is, we are the, you know, where the West begins. That's a slogan mm-hmm. for Fort Worth. But really, that's true of everything around yeah. here. There's a little more of that true grit and hard work. In what, how did you feel area. about the, uh, is, that's the, is that the Will Rogers Stadium that we migrated from to the Dickies Arena? From Will Rogers to Dickies. Right. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, yeah. Will Rogers is still... I mean, there's still only two or three what we call dark days where there's oh. no event there. Yeah. And we were turning events away. We couldn't, yeah. concerts we couldn't book. We didn't have mm-hmm. the sound system. We didn't have the seating. We just were desperate for more space. Yeah. So it's a nice marriage of the two. Yeah. Dickies can host the rodeo, and then it can also host gymnastics and concerts All and everything else. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. And somebody said, does that mean Will Rogers dark? I said, no way. Will Rogers is busy. Yeah, I mean, horse shows, the cutting horse shows still there, and paint horse shows there, all kinds of things. I was kind of tore up about it because we, you know, every year we go, and that's where we go, and that's where it's held, and so, in I guess in the name of tradition, it just it felt like we were losing something. Yeah, I hated that part of it yeah. because I mean, there's nothing quite like Will Rogers. You can go and stand behind the boxes and lean against the wall and visit yeah. with your friends, and but the boxes are, you know, the the Coliseum just needs a lot of work. Yeah. And having that in it got, didn't give us the capacity to do the yeah. work we needed. And and we were losing shows from people who didn't have the nostalgia that you and I have right, for Will Rogers. Right. The cowboys and the cowgirls competing, the back stalls, um, the alley where the barrel racers run in, they bring the stock out, mm-hmm. is very antiquated yeah. and very difficult so they were delighted to see the new well, that, that first uh year that it was open and we held it at dickie's yeah you know we're there and it's like okay this is really nice you know very good air conditioning great lighting plenty of space and uh then after the show i was like well let's let's just go see what's going on at the, the old arena so we walked down there and we just left dickie's this huge awesome beautiful freshly painted doesn't even smell like cow poop yet <laughs> And uh, we get over there, and, and we come around the corner. And I go, oh, my God, did we do all of that in this room? It's amazing. At one it? time. It's just amazing when you look at the two and think, how did we get that in? Yeah. Somehow a lot of hard work, work on behalf of the Stock Show Committee. Um, we're doing pretty good on time. I know okay. we, were, we were running kind of behind schedule. Did Do you have a time I'm that fine. you need to get no, out of here? I'm, I'm okay. fine. Um, Because I'll take this all night if you'll let me. (laughs) Well, we won't do that, (laughs) but we'll have a good visit. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about hidden gems in Fort Worth that that you think people should know about. Because every once in a while, I'll I'll stumble onto something. I'm like, my God, I didn't know this was here. I'll tell you where I was this weekend. And every time I'm there, and I know it's not a hidden gem, but it's not that busy. The Botanic Gardens are absolutely spectacular. Mm -hmm. And the city and the Friends of the Gardens have done a lot of work out there. And it is just, and yes, there's an admission fee now, but there are some free times during the month you can mm-hmm. go. It is absolutely gorgeous right now. It's just it's just beautiful, and you can wander around. The kids can play and have fun. Yeah. The other really, truly hidden gem, and it shouldn't be, is the Nature Center mm-hmm. out at Lake Worth, um, going up towards Eagle Mountain. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. one of the largest pre- uh, wetlands preserves mm-hmm. around. It's And, you know, we got a 
true buffalo herd out there. Yep. They've been tested to see that they're not crossbred with any cattle. Oh wow! You can and some calves and lots of trails. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't go out there without seeing deer and all kinds of wildlife. And if you you can take a paddle canoe, yeah, I, tour. You can do a midnight one, and you can see alligators when you go out on the canoes isn't and that kayaks. Something. <laughs> yeah, it, it is the truly boat. a beautiful place. And yeah. If you have kids who are interested, they teach nature classes mm-hmm. and things out there, and it's really, really fun to go to. We've been out there a couple times, and uh, I think we were going to do the canoe thing, but it was just too busy. There were two. Oh, we did do it. Okay, so we did do it. But uh, you can, you know, you can book those ahead. We need to. Yeah, yeah. we just kind of happened to to go by there and pop in real quick, and and then there's a beautiful wildlife center out on. Um, where the old Channel Five building used to be up on the up on Thirty, mm. oh, uh, okay. just past yeah. Bridge Street or before Bridge Street, mm-hmm. kind of in the Meadowbrook area that the city owns. That were turned into a big, truly nature. You can hike and walk through it. It's it's really a pretty center. Yeah, and it you know there's all it looks like native Texas prairie and, and Are bikes allowed. Not in that part. If you really oh. want to bike and go some more bike, go to Gateway Park, the the mountain bike trail back in there, and even the road bike trail back there. Where does is, that start at? It starts right there at Gateway Park, just off of Beach, oh, and okay. goes back in. And They've got some, the baseball fields mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And all around the outside of that park, there are all kinds of trails, and kind of back in the woods, there are a bunch of mountain bike trails that okay. the Mountain Bike Association of Fort Worth has been grooming and building, and it it's really cool. So you don't just do flat biking. You like the mountain I don't like the mountain bikes no? much, but I have ridden them. <laughs> but no, I try to do, I don't do flat, but I do mostly road. Yeah. Do you have a, a I'm sure you do, your, what, what's your bike of choice? Uh, it just depends on what I'm going to do with it. I mean, I yeah. have three right now, which yeah. is down a little bit, but um, I've got a great road bike that I like to ride, and when I'm riding fast, that's the one I like, and on the streets or on the trails. Mm-hmm. I've also got an e-bike, a pedal assist e-bike. Oh, nice. It's really fun. It kind of <laughs> puts the fun back in biking, and yeah. you still get a great workout because you still have to pedal, yeah. but you get going uphill and stuff, You get or into the wind, you get a little assist. I just saw one of those the other day. What's the, the, I mean, can you go on a six-hour bike ride with something like that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. 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 They, It'll they're keep great. Up. Yeah, they'll keep up. That's really cool. I think, I think the mileage on them... It's probably 85 or 90 miles, and depends on how hard you're pedaling. Right. If you're pedaling it, really pushing it hard, you know, you'd shorten that. But mm-hmm. most of the time, I mean, I ride my e-bike, and there are times I don't even turn it on. Yeah. But there are other areas if I just want to giggle, just as relax. we say, giggle and grin on my bike. <laughs> I just get on it and turn it on and pedal, Yeah. You know? And, and well, then I've cool. got a hybrid bike, and the hybrid bike I can take off trail. And that that's supposed to be like a flat bike? mountain bike mm-hmm. it's got flat handlebars yeah like a you can bike. tell i know a lot about bikes yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've walked into that uh <laughs> just off of 7th street there's a bike shop down there and a, g- a couple times we've said mm-hmm. we're gonna get bikes we're gonna start biking these trails and and we walked in there and started looking at bikes and then well how much is it oh no we can't yeah you start looking gonna, at the prices yeah. on some of those bikes and you'll go <laughs> i don't want to do this again i might walk a little longer yeah. well you know you can get on a b-cycle one of our big that's successes right. the last yeah. 10 years has been the b-cycles and, and that that's been going well for yeah, the city they're great i mean yeah. and they've now added a fleet of electric bikes to it so you wow. you can get on and they won't go without you pedaling, but mm-hmm. they do give you some assist for yeah. people who maybe haven't ridden for years or mm-hmm. don't have the capacity. The The white ones in the racks are mm-hmm. the e-bikes. The red ones are regular B-cycles. Yeah. People love them. Yeah, that's great. I'm They're glad that's working fun. out because some, some other cities, I think Austin's had a big problem with those scooters, those Uber scooters, and they just end up in lakes. They end up in the lakes, yeah. Rivers and and when they like first that. brought those... That bright green, the lime bikes to Dallas and Austin, they ended up everywhere, and they ended up in their rivers and lakes. And And we don't have that here, do we? We don't have that. We have the stationed B cycles, and that's one of the main reasons they end up just trashed all over your sidewalks. Yeah, we don't have the scooters either for that reason. Really gross. However, they can be fun. They can be. Yeah, you can get those suckers up to fourteen miles an hour (laughs) on a downhill. I wanted to ask you about uh, important public services in our our city, charities, uh, things that you've seen just in your time uh, as mayor and living here that that maybe deserve a, a mention or that you oh, think Oh, there are, are so great many. To support. This is this is truly truly a very philanthropic community. Mm-hmm. They give so much money. Our major foundations that support the museums and so much else have just they've helped shape this community. 
we wouldn't have the world class museums, the Kimball, the Carter, the Modern, all of those. If um, Cowgirl Museum, the what we used to call the Children's Museum, the Museum of Science and History, without our charities, we philanthropic families and all, we wouldn't have those. But there are so many good charities that do so much. There's two or three working on education that are doing great work helping families um, that helped get laptops and broadband into these kids' hands. And our own program, Read Fort Worth, has done a great job. Um, you know, that, I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to pick one. AIDS yeah. Outreach Center does a beautiful job helping families. And, I mean, people tend to forget that AIDS was such a major pandemic in the right. 80s and 90s and just ravaged families and ravaged men, particularly at that point. And fastest growing segment in it now is women and, and their children. And really? the AIDS Outreach Center has done so much good work. And then you got the missions on Lancaster that are right. working on the homeless, Union mm-hmm. Gospel, Presbyterian Night Shelter, Salvation yeah. Army. We really are very blessed with people with great philanthropic crowds. I mean, Habitat for Humanity, I'm amazed at what they do and the number of ha- people that they've let through sweat equity get a home Yeah, and just done a beautiful job. I didn't realize how complicated that question was going to be, but we do have a lot we of do. really good charities and organizations. Yeah. And and I don't know what, what the big difference is. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the way uh, that our city is ran, but I uh, I lived down in Austin for about nine months. And there's a lot of things you notice whenever you move from Fort Worth to Austin, that'll just drive you insane. Um, but one thing that is extremely prevalent down there is the homeless community yeah. and the, the way that they're handling it. But f- for whatever reason, and um, I'm sure you have a better understanding of it than I ever would, but Fort Worth seems to handle that really well. We do have some, some very... Uh, hands-on organizations Indeed. that work there on Lancaster yeah. and really do take care of our homeless here. Yeah. And that might be the biggest part of it is we, we have an effective way of helping our homeless here. Yeah, and we still have people on the streets. Oh, we still have camping and all, but nothing like Austin yeah. had. And Austin just kind of opened it up a year ago or more, and it just got totally out of hand. We've been very fortunate that we have good response from our shelters, from other charities, from our churches. Our church groups are great at helping feed and and answer issues mhmr has worked hard our police department has a huge presence down there they have a a homeless unit that works with them and we combined with john peter smith and um, the police department fire department and medstar to try because we were getting so many calls down there for service that needed other things rather than a trip in an expensive ambulance to the hospital right so we have a small clinic there that that work it just i think it's the fact that people kind of came together and started talking about it mike moncrief who was mayor before me started an initiative called directions home that was to end home chronic homelessness you're never going to end all homelessness you're just not and then we moved that transitioned that over after 10 years into another program that's very similar and worked with the CDC, which is the, not the community, uh, but the continuum of care, which is um, the whole county works on that as well as the city. And it's, it's been very successful. Yeah. Is it a totally solved problem? No, it's not. Never I, will be, right? It never will yeah. be. I mean, you got too many people who are homeless for first one reason and then another. And yeah. early on in the pandemic, we really worried that our homeless population would totally explode. Yeah. Because people couldn't work, and were, you know, particularly people in the weight and service industry were out without jobs. But a lot of them, it didn't materialize. A lot yeah. of them got early in the pipeline and got rental assistance and help, and it it seemed to keep it down. And yeah, that was a big help. But I think it's owning that problem and and facing it head on and saying, what can we do to really help people? And this is a community that cares. Yeah, what can we do to help and not? get wrapped up around how do we solve it that's right it's not a it's solvable, not a solvable situation. problem I mean, you can solve certain parts of it and another group pops up but you yeah. have to say what is the best solution to help people yeah. it's not a handout it's a hand up yeah it's a way to help them get an education to get a job to get transportation mm-hmm. to get their children in school well from the outside looking in it looks it looks like it's working it is coming along yeah. i'm very pleased with where yeah. it is well the last question i had on my little 
a poorly written list here. That's was, okay. What is something that you wish people knew about you? You know, it's hard to say. I think people need to know. Somebody said, why are you doing this? For me, it's about the service. It's not. A, it's never been about the money. It's never. Been, my husband occasionally goes, "Oh, honey, you need to find just to find a job. <laughs> you you spend more of my money, you know, because the mayor just the mayor gets paid twenty nine thousand a year. As yeah. Tom always said, that pays your dry cleaning bill, maybe. <laughs> uh, but it was never about the money, and and it's more about the service. I care deeply about people, no matter where you are. You know, my children and my husband always say, you don't meet to meet 10 to 15 new people a day, mother, we can't live with you. <laughs> you just thrive on meeting people and looking for their challenges and how can you bring the right t- table, people to the table to help work on that. And that's just my passion. I guess I've been blessed. I guess God said, okay, let's let her do this. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think I, I do think that's what this is all about. Yeah. Serving the, well, I, I love this community. I mean, I was born here. I always say, somebody said, you want to go anywhere else? I said, no, I was born here. I, they'll bury me here. Yeah. I love to travel. We've been a lot of cool places, but I want to be in Fort Worth and in Tarrant County. I stuck my foot out one time and, and tried to get away from Fort Worth, and I came right back. Yeah. But when we first got out of college. We lived down on the coast in Beaumont for nearly two years and decided that was just a fatal mistake. We need to be back in Fort Worth. <laughs> but you have contributed largely to the success of the city and, and helped make it what what we all love. Uh, yeah, thank you. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for doing this. And I got to tell you, I was nervous as I've ever been before doing an interview <laughs> because I've wanted to do this with you for so long. But after we got sat down and started talking a little bit, I loosened right right up. Good. My good. palms even quit sweating. Look, That's a good thing. No more sweat. No sweaty palms. <laughs> Well, thank you again. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate and, uh, it. I look forward to seeing it. This platform is open to you anytime. Okay. And if you don't have time to sit down, if, if you just want to do a phone call, and I can take that recording okay. and put it into one of our episodes. And anytime you need to get message out on any subject, we're at your disposal. I appreciate that okay. immensely because that's what makes for more special. People offer to help and they get the message out. Yeah. And maybe this will County too. help bring up that, that percentage we were talking about. Let's hope so. Sub 40. Well, even if they're <laughs> over 40, I mean, even that population doesn't vote like it should. Yeah. And I don't think we covered this, but um, it it's so important to get involved in local uh, elections. You know, voting for the president is fun and it gets all the attention on TV, but the thing that has the most direct impact on how your life how you live your life your quality of life what what's going on in your immediate surroundings happens at the local level it happens at the local level if you get up in the morning and brush your teeth you want clean water mm-hmm. to brush your teeth with yep. clean water to drink when you have an emergency you want to call 911 somebody's going to show up police fire med star somebody mm-hmm. and all of that is strictly local and that's what you're voting and the roads for go, and that's what you're voting for and you if you re, it's just backwards in this country we vote so much at the national level and then mm-hmm. at the state level better and very little at the local level and that's yeah. where your kids get their education that's where your roads are done i mean we ought to be everybody ought to be voting at the local level yeah not just city county but schools too so go vote go vote <laughs> all right betsy thank you again and um like i said anytime you need to Our platform, it's at your disposal. I'll take you up on it. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) All right, Fort Worth Roots, we'll see you next week. A very... Very sincere thank you, Betsy Price. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This was a huge moment for me. I, the entire interview, I'm trying to act like I'm not fanboying out. Is that the correct vernacular for that? I was so excited. Um, I managed to keep it together. <laughs> but uh, th- this was something that was meant to happen from the very beginning. I mean, in my mind, uh, uh, Betsy was extremely busy when I started sending emails to her office. And I'm, I'm sure everybody's... Be on my podcast. Okay. Yeah, sure, guy. (laughs) Betsy, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you win the election as county judge. And uh, you're welcome on the show before, during, or after uh, that election. Uh, I'm just so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, 
guys and gals, if uh, this is your first time listening, thank you for being here. Uh, please subscribe to the show on your podcast player of your preference, whatever it is, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, you can still find us on our website. I don't think there's a way to subscribe to that, but uh, that's my fault, not yours. FortWorthRoots.com. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube. Thank you all for being here, and I will see you next week. <laughs>